Patty Thurman, thank you. Um, as we approach such a, a solemn one year right. anniversary of this event, I, I suppose I would begin by just asking you maybe, you've been so involved, but have you taken time to reflect on, on what events actually transpired and, and what your reaction was in the beginning and, and sort of the direction you helped launch um, emerging from that war? You can probably go ahead. I mean, for, for me, I, I, I feel like the response, that initial response was just one of like complete shock and sadness that it happened in our community and then I guess to realize that it was just directed to a community uh, the black community and targeted I think initially it was just I was just sickened and saddened and I just felt like we have to do something immediately we can't wait 12 hours you know and talking to the Thurman and the kids about getting on board immediately and getting things started um, that's that was that general initial response and I guess going forward it's been how do we how do we keep this ball rolling and how do we honor not only the people that were that were killed their families but that community and make it this make the, make a big change and to continue to keep them so it's all about momentum like for me right now it's about keep Keep the ball moving forward. Thurman, did you have anything to add to that? I remember watching the both of you in the, yeah. in the press conference in right. the immediate aftermath of all of that. And you were so passionate and so vocal. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, w when you see it happen in other places <clears throat> and then it happens in the city that you're in, that initial shock was, you know, it took took me hours, maybe even a couple of days to, to realize that it happened here, a place that I've been to, a uh, place that uh, some of my kids go to, shopping at that Tops Market um, down on Jefferson. And so, uh, but now, you know, I'm, I'm sad still, but I'm still angry. I'm still angry about what happened that day and what are we going to do to continue to have this legacy for all the victims uh, continue year after year after year because this is going to be here. This memory now is going to be here forever. And we want to do our part as much as we possibly can to, to make sure that happens. What is the best way to go about doing that? In my opinion, it's communicate um, communicate effectively and not stand on two sides of something you know looking at each other from opposite views it's it's you we have to start coming together and I say this all the time and I know I sound like a broken record but the political sides and all that nonsense and in that way people aren't they're not growing as human beings and loving each other and just doing what's right and you don't even realize all of the commonalities and the things that you agree on because people just don't communicate. They don't have conversations with each other and, and get on a level playing field for change. And I think personally that that has to happen. And then you have to have people in our community and there's a lot of them out there that do really great things, but you have to have the people with means and our community that have done really well here give to that community even if it's a even if it's a small risk you have to start putting economic development into that city and low income housing is great all of those things are great but that's not that's not real opportunity real opportunities need to be put into that community i mean i i think you've seen it over the past couple of years, you know, you've heard stories about the redlining, opportunity zones and things of that nature, but you, you're, you're talking about a grocery store that's only been there for 20 years, for 20 years. Well, where are the hospitals? 
Where's the other things that we need in that community? Those are the well, things that- the hospitals are close. The hospitals are You're, close, yeah. but- Yeah, doctors' offices. There's other things that, and, yeah. need, that need to be in that community. And, you know, I recently they talked about tearing down the 33, making it a part of a neighborhood again. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it runs deep. I mean, we can sit up here and talk about it for hours, but until that happens, man, it's, um, it's going to continue to be a struggle, but we're going to be part of that struggle too. We're, we're not going to give up. Yeah, and you have, like Thurman said, you know, in, in that area, you, you have, I mean, you have all these places to live. Okay, you're putting the affordable housing there, but where, where what about like, transportation and and they're in food deserts there's nowhere to get you know groceries but you're you have to, it has to be really comprehensive plan you know to make a real change over there so the two of you were so involved initially and helped to raise so much of the, the funds that went yeah. to victims families immediately right. and, and, and helped with that immediate assistance yes but the word that comes to mind as I listen to the two of you is sustainable sustained right. support and as being tied to the committee as you are what is your view of the level of support where it is where it continues to be and where it really needs to be to accomplish the goals you're talking well um just say for instance whatever was raised within this year if it's a dollar more for the following year then that's the right start. That's the right start. And the people who have continued to give throughout this entire year, they come back, not a problem, let's do it, we're doing it all again. But we- Are I, you I, talking about giving, like, I mean, are you talking about giving back to like charitable, like raise money in a charitable way, or what are we, what can we do in that neighborhood? I'm what? I guess I'm talking about where the two of you are so close to it and have been such leaders. Right in the entire mission and movement that we're talking about here. What do you think needs to be done? Um, and, and, and where are the shortfalls? Has the level of support continued at the level that it needs to or should? Or I guess frame that for me. Well, I think there's it's such a combination of public and private. And, and there's so many different things that go into you know, having real change that it's, I don't, it's how do people, like, how do people work together? How do people work together? What do you think, Tony? You know, it's, I mean, it's a difficult question to, to answer because it's only been a year. And, and, and I don't think things have really changed over there in that neighborhood. Yes, they rebuilt the tops again, but what else has anybody else talked about over there? Uh, like she said, economic growth, you know, the transportation. Um, you know, it, I think it's just so much more that we could talk about and what we can do. It's just that <clears throat> communication wise, we have to continue to do this. I don't care if it's every two months, or every three months. We have to continue to build on that throughout the year. And for as long as, you know, this anniversary and we're gonna be here, we're gonna be a part of it. We're gonna do whatever we can, you know, to, to, to help the people, to help the family, to help the friends. Yeah, I mean, to have an impact in that neighborhood, you have to have so many different parts coming together. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say is like, all these different parts that are gonna make it, you say sustainable, I say, yeah, sustainable, but also really wide and broad. It can't just be one part of the community wanting better. Everyone has to want better for our community. And our community is, is Western New York. It's not the east side of Buffalo. It's not East Aurora. It's not Colden, it's Western New York. And what happened on Jefferson Avenue you should be feeling the hurt and the pain no matter what street you are on in Western New York. You should have that same hurt and wanting to do better for our city and for our region and being there for each other. That's what needs to happen. 
something needs to light a fire under you to make, you know, you have that same hope and hurt for your neighbor. The title of this program is Hope in a Healing, the theme of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how much healing has there been, as you said, Thurman, it's only been a year, and you talked about the fact that, that I'm sure the both of you are still angry. Yeah. How much healing has there been? How much hope do you have that there can be more? I think there's been a lot of healing because I've been actually, you know, talking to people that were not just the victims, but the police officers. You know, I've been talking to a lot of them throughout the year for an, for an entire year, kind of, uh, about every two or three weeks. And so um, with talking to them, I feel like I have hope because they're hurting too. But me being where I'm at a place right now where I'm able to see my people, say hi to them, talk to them, yeah. that has helped me heal a lot. I mean, yeah, like because- Like brotherhood. Like a brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. Because I used to live way out there, but now I live right in the city. I live right in the city and then I see us everywhere and I say hi. I go to Wegmas, I go to Tops, I go to everywhere. I go to Famous Footwear. I go to all those stores and I see and people look at me like, hey, how you doing? Thanks for whatever you, thanks for doing so much in the community. And I'm like, you're welcome, but I'm not done yet. So that's part of my healing. And I think that part really gives me hope that this can turn around. Hey Patty, being in the city, do you feel that energy? No, I haven't been out like as much as Thurman has been <laughs> like, you know, he's really, you know, gotten out into the neighborhood and stuff. And I haven't done that as much as he has. But I also think for Thurman, like he just said, being, you know, being with people that felt the same way or could really sympathize with each other on a different level, I think was really special for him. Um, and I'm glad that during that time we just moved that he's getting that because we loved where we lived, but that was, I mean, it wasn't, that wasn't the case out there. And I, I think it was nice for him. I think it was nice for him to have that experience because like the pain is hard. It, it's like we, we look forward to celebrating with the community over a course of events that entire weekend you know, starting on Friday on the 12th, but also it's such like trepidation because you don't want it to come and you don't want to relive all of that hurt and the pain um, on that day. But to be honorable, you have to celebrate for, you know, those lives that were lost. So it's a lot of mixed feelings going into, you know, next weekend. And so as that approaches, and I guess, I guess those of us who've lived in this community, either from here or right. lived here the majority of our lives, yeah. right. understand what makes it unique at so many levels. And I guess this city and this area having absorbed what happened close to a year ago, how uniquely or well equipped do you think it is? A city of good neighbors, that type of thing. I'm to glad you said that. To build, yeah. to build <laughs> the right way and to get to maybe where we need to get to moving forward. Can I answer this yeah, one? Yeah, you can go right ahead. <laughs> we need to be the city of good neighbors for all our neighbors. It's just like I said earlier, the city of good neighbors, there's so many good people, but we can't just help the people that, you know, are in our lo own little community. We gotta be neighbors to everybody, everybody in the community. And that goes all different ways. You know, every, we need to all, not to sound cheesy, we need to love each other. Yeah, I mean, just from that weekend, starting on May 12th, you know, there's gonna be a lot of events happening. And you know what, when I go to these events, I wanna see people from Orchard Park. I wanna see people from East Aurora, from Williamsville, Amherst. I wanna see those people exactly. out there. Because you know what, when something happens in East Aurora, Orchard Park, I'm out there. But I'm but out there. but saying that both community we, yeah. we it needs we need to start coming together for things. Sure. Yeah. 
any last message you'd want to send? Or anything I left out? That we don't, we don't want it to be all about negative talk because there's a lot, there is a lot good going on. There is a lot good going on. I think when you are angered and hurt and you're in pain, you have a tendency to lash out, but make sure that when you're lashing out, like it's being directed toward positive, positive, a positive end. Like you want, you don't want, you don't want to turn people away. We're trying to bring people together. Yeah. I know, I think, because for me, I, I think you can tell I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little hot about it, because I do. That's just the way that I feel. I'm just, and it hurts. You said early in the interview, you said you're still angry. Yeah. With what Patty had just said, do you try and channel oh, yeah. that emotion? Oh, I have to. Toward the, and, and, and it drives you to to do what you've been doing. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm just as passionate about, you know, this right here as I was playing for 13 years, for 12 years here. Yeah, um, yeah, but I know how to channel those things as I got older. I know how to relax more. And when, you know, that time comes for these events to start happening, I can channel all that away. You know, I, I won't even be thinking about, you know, negative, <laughs> thing, negative yeah. things, you know, I won't even think yeah. about it. It'll be all positive things for me and um, for, for the entire weekend. And uh, like I say, we're going to celebrate. Is that how you both have tried to lead in this? I think that's we a both real, have. That's a really good question. Yeah. I, I, I think we yeah, have a good tried to lead that way of being positive. Um, from all the people that I talk to, it's pretty much positive 99.9% .9 of the time. If you want to be, you know, respected and listened to, you have to respect other people. So I think there's there's meeting people at where they're at in a respectful way so that, you know, you can share your hope for the future. If you're not meeting if you if you're not willing to meet people where they're at, you're not doing anybody a service. Anybody. You know, not the people from your community and not the people from another community. Thanks so much to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.